we need to find the Laplace transform of the given function f. So function f is e to the power t times cosine of t. Let's write this down. We need to obtain Laplace transform of the function e to the power t times cosine of t. By definition, Laplace transform is an improper integral that goes from 0 to infinity. And in that integral, we will always have a factor of e to the power negative s t. And then that factor will have to multiply by the function that we're given. So times e to the power t times cosine of t dt. And the variable of integration always matches the variable of our function. So to evaluate this improper integral, we're going to change limit infinity to just variable b. So it's going to be from 0 to b. And then we're going to apply a limit as b approaches infinity. And then I can simplify expression inside those two bases I can combine. It's going to be e to the power, I have to add powers, negative st plus t times cosine of t dt. What I'll do next, I'm going to just focus, focus on the integral and then I will put the result back. So that's going to be my scratch work. I'm going to evaluate integral of e and the power I can rewrite as t times 1 minus s. Right? If I factor out t, that's what I'm going to obtain. Cosine of t dt. Don't forget that variable s is not the variable of integration here, so it means that we're treating it as the constant. So 1 minus s we treat as the constant. So to evaluate this integral, we have to use integration by parts. So if I let u be equal e to the power t times 1 minus s, then du will be, okay, so if that's the constant, it has to be placed in the front, right, since I am using chain rule. 1 minus s goes in the front and then times, well, that same um, function t to the power 1 minus s. That's du. Okay, now that is dv. dv is cosine t dt. That means that the v will be sine of t. Okay, now as I continue with integration by parts formula, it's I'll have to write u times v. So it's e to the power t times 1 minus s times sine of t and then minus v du. I just realized that I didn't put dt over here, dt. Now du has this constant that's in the front or what we treat as the constant so I'm going to put it in the front of the integral so 1 minus s goes in the front of the integral and then v and what's left from du I'm placing inside. So it's um e to the power t times 1 minus s times sine t dt. And we know from our integration experience that whenever we have to integrate the product of exponential function and trigonometric function, sine or cosine, we will be going in circles, right? So that's what I have now here. That's what I have to integrate again. And it's going to be another integration by parts. But our goal is to come back to that same combination we started with. So it's just one more step and we're going to go back to that combination. So let's see. Um, once again, u is e to the power t times 1 minus s du. So it's the same thing. 1 minus s goes on the front and then it's e to the power t times 1 minus s dt and then dv this time is sine. That means that v will be negative cosine. So I have this part. I'm going to rewrite it. e to the power t times 1 minus s sine t minus. I have 1 over uh, 1 minus s and that's in front of this integral, so it means that it will be multiplied by the result of this integration by parts, so times u times v, that's negative e to the power t times 1 minus s times cosine of t minus integral of v times du. v has negative sign, I'm going to place it in the front, so this becomes plus, and then du has a constant, I'm going to also place it in the front, 1 minus s. 
uh, integral and then what I have left to multiply is e to the power t times 1 minus s times cosine of t dt brackets and now I got back to where I started right here so I started with this integral and I'm seeing it again that's what I'm talking about right here right so now we should be able to find what equals to for that I have to simplify all that drop all the parentheses and let's see how it's going to look like e to the power t times um, 1 minus s sine of t and now I'm distributing expression negative 1 minus c, this expression and as I distribute it negative times negative becomes positive so that's plus 1 minus s times e to the power t times 1 minus s cosine of t and a negative times positive gives me a negative but then 1 minus s times 1 minus s is 1 minus s squared and then the integral like that okay once again this integral is the same one as we started with so I'm going to add them together I will add I will add plus this expression well that integral on the right hand side well it will make all that to disappear right and I will add that same thing on the left hand side so well I'm gonna write it here why not so plus 1 minus s squared and then the integral right so I'm adding them together on the left hand side how will this all look like well I can factor out the integral itself as I factor out from the sum the integral what I will have left inside the parentheses is 1 since it's the coefficient of this integral here right 1 plus this expression so that's what I'll I'll have let's write it down down here so I'll have the following on the left hand side I'll have integral times um, 1 plus 1 minus s squared right that's what I got from factoring out the integral and then on the right hand side I have those two terms e to the power t times 1 minus s sine of t plus um, 1 minus s times e to the power t times 1 minus s cosine of t and to find now like the last step well at least like for now um, to find what that integral equals to I have to divide by this factor on each side so I'm going to divide on the left and it's going to be cancelled and I'm going to divide by it on the right hand side so the first term will have 1 plus 1 minus s squared in the denominator as well as the second one over 1 plus 1 minus s squared in the denominator by the way those two expressions cannot be um, cancelled right now we have to take all that and evaluate it at b and zero remember this is where we started yeah and now we have to evaluate it at b and zero and then after that we're going to apply the limit as b approaches infinity well there is a shortcut notation to this entire process and let me show how it's also common to write that step when you um, find Laplace transform well you just say that you have to take that resulting expression well the one you got from integrating okay, so I copied it down and then you have to evaluate you're kind of combining two steps in one so you just have to evaluate it at infinity and zero and of course find the difference of the results so that's the acceptable um, notation well since 
I am trying to find what this all equals to when t approaches infinity. Um, in both terms, I have trig functions, sine and cosine, and I know that as t approaches infinity for both, values are ranging between negative 1 and 1, right? So um, those two are bounded by negative 1 and 1 as t approaches infinity. I have this exponential function here, right? Well, in both. And I know that when power of e get, gets infinitely large, the overall result also gets infinitely large. Now, with all that in mind, I really want to have base e with its power in the denominator. So I want the denominator get infinitely large because this way it's going to be easier for me to find the limit, right? If denominator gets infinitely large and numerator gets bounded between negative 1 and 1, I know that the overall fraction will approach 0. Now, to put e with its power in the denominator, I just have to change the sign of the power to the opposite. So, in other words, I'll just have to put negative in front of the power. So, as it moves to the denominator, so as I move that to the denominator, I have to change the power to the opposite. So, I'm just putting negative sign in front of it. And, of course, that negative sign can be uh, multiplied by the expression. So, this is what I'll get. Let's just write it down. Now, sine of t stays in the numerator. Now, in the denominator, I'm going to have e to the power and that negative sign I'm going to distribute. That's going to be t to the t times. And now, instead of 1 minus s, I will, they will have opposite signs. So, it's going to be s minus 1, like that. Remember, we treat s as the constant. And then, I also have all that in the denominator. So, that's put brackets 1 plus 1 minus s squared like that and then I'll do same trick with the second expression now 1 minus s stays in the numerator, numerator. 1 minus s stays in the numerator cosine stays in the numerator but then e goes to the denominator so I change sign of the power I put minus and that that minus I will put distribute so it's going to be power t times s minus 1 like that um, and then what else? And 1 plus uh, 1 minus s squared, like that. Okay. And again, I'm evaluating that at infinity and 0, but now it's easier for me to evaluate. So as I plug in infinity, or as, as, I, as t approaches infinity in each term, um, each of those two fractions approach 0. Again, the numerators are bounded by negative 1 and 1. But the denominator is now getting infinitely large, right? And that means that each fraction goes to um, in, uh, goes to zero. So I'm going to put zero plus zero for each, and then minus, and then I'm evaluating each at zero. So let's see what happens when I evaluate at zero. Sine of zero equals zero, right? So that means that this turns into zero as well, and then minus, well, I'm distributing that minus sign, minus, and then when I plug in zero into the second expression, well, that one will not disappear. What is cosine of zero? Cosine of zero is one. Now, one minus s, nothing happens to that in the numerator, right? That's what we treat it as a constant, so we only plug in for t. So that becomes one, cosine of zero is one. Now here, here it's e to the power 0 well, times something. So it's e to the power 0. e to the power 0 is 1. And so that's gone. But then all that is not going to be affected since it doesn't have any t's involved. So it's 1 plus 1 minus s squared. Okay, and that means that what we got, all zeros are gone, we're left with this expression. And that's the result of Laplace transform. What I'll do to claim it as the final answer. I will apply that negative sign to the numerator so it's not there. So I'll have s minus 1 in the numerator and then 1 plus 1 minus s squared in the denominator. And that's going to be the answer. So Laplace transform of our function e to the power t to cosine of t is this function in terms of the variable s. That's the answer.